Lord had chose for me. Um, and I called my parents on the phone and I said, if you guys want to be there, you guys can come to the courthouse. I'm getting married. And um, I kind of laughed at them when they told me that it was a huge mistake because I felt like they had no idea what they were talking about. And um, I got pregnant right after that with my now two and a half year old son. And um, it was just a really, it was a very abusive relationship, not only to me, but to my son at an early age. And um, I started, uh, this, this man started um, introducing me to pills. And um, I, I kept saying no, I, I didn't want to do it, but eventually just the peer pressure, and this was my husband, and I wanted to do whatever he was going to do. And um, I guess it, to me, it was a, if I did it, it would show him that I loved him and um, my mindset was just so skewed in my thinking and um, it just turned into a really bad addiction problem and so at the age of 21 I was a full-blown addict um, I was digging in dumpsters trying to find things to sell to support my habit um, at this point my parents had no idea about the abuse or the drugs um, I was also picking up railroad ties on the side of the road with a stroller. I was walking back and forth, not with Andrew, but I was putting the railroad ties in the stroller and taking them to the scrapyard for money to support my habit. And um, right after I had Andrew, I had gotten pregnant again with um, my second son, Micah, and uh, which has turned out to be such a blessing. Um, Four days before I had Micah, I decided that it would be best if I gave Micah up for adoption. And um, that was probably the best decision that I ever made when I was living in the world. And um, I actually um, went through New Hope Pregnancy Center, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with that, and met with Yana Higgins. And um, it's so awesome to tell this part of the story because even through my sin and going down the wrong path, the Lord still continued to bless my life even though I didn't deserve it. And um, this couple, they're actually a pastor here in Cleveland, and it's an open adoption. So I see Mike all the time. And um, uh, shortly after that, I kind of just, um, I just started feeling even more broken and more depressed and I knew in my heart that I needed to get out but I just I didn't know how I, I did not know how to tell my parents that I was addicted to pills and um, I had lived in and out of hotel rooms during the two or three years that I was using and um, a year ago right around this time I was living in a hotel room I was working but barely I was calling out like every other day and um, decided that I was going to tell my parents about my addiction problem. So in December of last year, I went to my parents before work and I told them that I had a problem. And that was why I was three months late on my rent. And immediately they told me that I needed to bring my son to them. And I really struggled with that for a couple days, but I knew that that was best for him. He didn't need to be in that, in that environment. And... Um, I, I eventually, a few weeks later, signed my rights over to my parents for my son because I, I, I had tried to stop doing drugs a couple times on my own and I couldn't do it. And um, the withdrawals were so bad I had to take Andrew to my parents' house um, because I couldn't even take care of him. And um, so I signed my rights over and I continued to use for another month and a half. I left my parents' house. They told me I could stay there. I chose not to, and um, you know, I think what needs to happen, especially when you're wrapped up in some sort of addiction, is that the Lord has to bring you to that point of pure brokenness, and mm -hmm. I had nothing left in me, and I was um, tiny and frail, and just, I was miserable, and 